Celine Dion is barking. Drake Bell's TV mother breaks her silence about his sexual abuse. And let's start right off with the shocking new story that Simon Cowell is leaving ITV. Brace yourselves because ITV might be saying goodbye to some of its biggest stars, and you'll never guess where they're headed to. Well, yep, you guessed it, Netflix. Most important of the bunch, Simon Cowell and Holly Willoughby are making waves. Simon, the king of Saturday nights, and Holly, the queen of daytime TV, have reportedly inked deals with Netflix for their next big gigs. It's like ITV's losing its royal court. And get this, they're not alone. Joel Domit, Michelle Keegan, and the power couple Emma and Matt Willis are also jumping ship to Netflix. It's like a mass exodus. You need to leave. But wait, there's more. Simon's gearing up for a talent hunt like no other. Think One Direction vibes, but on steroids. And Holly, she's teaming up with none other than Bear Grylls for a wild jungle adventure. So what's the deal with ITV losing all of its stars to Netflix? Is this the end of an era or just the beginning of a streaming revolution? Drake and Josh breaking news coming in today. In a heartfelt Instagram post, Nancy Sullivan, who portrayed the loving mother on the hit TV show Drake and Josh, is sending love and support to her co-star Drake Bell. Sullivan wrote, they weren't my real kids, but I'll always love them. It broke my heart into a million pieces to hear just how much Drake was holding inside when we were working together. She continued, I was both devastated and proud seeing the man he's grown into sit down on camera and bravely tell his truth. This comes after Drake Bell recently shared his experiences of past abuse at the hands of dialogue coach Dan Peck. Sullivan added, past abuse doesn't define us and it has no right to rule our lives. I know that putting this burden down will free him in so many ways. We'll forever have the memory of the person you're defending violating me. Sullivan expressed hope that memories of the joy they shared on set would overshadow the pain, sending love to Drake for a deep healing and for a rich and beautiful life ahead. And in another heartwarming development, Drake's former co-star, who played the lovable brother, also reached out in support, stating that Reliving this publicly is incredibly difficult, but I hope it can bring healing for the victims and their families, as well as necessary change to our industry. Bruno Mars won't need to wash dishes. Baby girl, what's happening? Well, it turns out Bruno Mars isn't in some crazy $50 million debt with MGM in Vegas after all. There was this wild story going around saying he was using his nightly earnings to pay off his huge debt like he owed his soul to the casino or something. But MGM stepped up and shut that down real quick. They said Bruno's been in good standing with them and they are happy with their partnership. These two have been tight since 2016 and Bruno's been rocking it out in Vegas with his shows at Park MGM. And get this, he's not stopping anytime soon. He's extended his gig. Plus he's branching out with a fancy cocktail bar and lounge at the Bellagio. The saga of Kate Middleton has been somewhat put to rest today. After a fleeting glimpse of the princess in Windsor last weekend set social media afire once again, a video statement from the royal today confirmed that she is in the early stages of cancer. In the statement, Catherine says it was a huge shock after an incredibly tough couple of months, but she sent a positive message saying, I am well and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal. The abdominal surgery she underwent in January was not connected, but it was during the procedure that the cancer was first discovered. As a result, beginning at the end of February, Catherine began a course of preventative chemotherapy. The palace says it will not be sharing any further medical information, including the type of cancer. The princess, 42, said Also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. Celine Dion was barking in the Boston Bruins locker room. <laughs> Talk about a pre-game surprise, Celine Dion brought her a game when she crashed the Boston Bruins locker room before their game against the New York Rangers. The legendary singer, accompanied by her twin sons, Nelson and Eddie, had the players excited as she announced the starting lineup. It's an honor and a pleasure to introduce Celine Dion, who's gonna do starting lineup. She has her two sons with her. Thank you, thank you so much. Bruins head coach Jim Montgomery introduced Dion, calling it an honor and a privilege. But it was her dramatic moment. You make me hungry. Pasta! 
introducing goalie Jeremy Swayman as Bulldog that stole the show, with Dion leading the team and Wolfen. <laughs> Should I say barking? <laughs> with Dion leading the team and barking. <laughs> Later, Dion was featured on the Jumbotron earning the title of Fan of the Game, and even rocking out to Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer with an air guitar solo. Alyssa Ragu comes out against idol controversy. Do I think you could win it? No. Okay. Personally. Gotcha. Controversy surrounds American Idol as former contestant Alyssa Ragu speaks out against the show's editing of her latest appearance. Ragu took to TikTok to deny hijacking her friend's audition, alleging a sexist and harmful narrative was perpetuated. As you may have seen, the episode portrays a narrative that pins two female friends against each other, seemingly for the sake of ratings and drama. In a surprising turn of events on Sunday's episode, Ragu impressed the judges and earned a ticket to Hollywood just moments after her friend, Julia Darvo, was rejected. However, Ragu argues that the episode was edited to create a false narrative of betrayal and competition between female friends. According to Ragu, she was invited by producers and encouraged by Davo to have a song ready in case she was asked to perform. But just for giggles, I'd love to sing you something. Yeah, it. come on, give Go it to it. us. Despite having enough tickets for both of them, Ragu claims the episode made it seem like she intentionally stole Davo's opportunity. Ragu alleges footage was cut, including her and Davo pleading with the judges, and her performance of a second song, her real audition. Despite the backlash online, Ragu apologized for any misunderstandings caused by the editing and urged American Idol to invite Davo on the show. And regardless of how the show portrayed it, Julia remains an incredible artist and friend. A college student was found dead after he went missing from Luke Bryan's bar. Missing college student Riley Strain has been found dead eight miles from downtown. Strain, 22, disappeared on March 8th while on a trip with his University of Missouri fraternity. He was last seen leaving Luke Bryan's restaurant, Luke's 32 Bridge Food and Drink. Strain's bank card was found near Cumberland River and Gay Street, and he was spotted walking around intoxicated. Heartbreaking details emerge as Strain's stepfather Chris revealed that the security footage showed Strain taking a wrong turn away from his hotel. The restaurant where he was last seen stated he was only served one alcoholic drink before being asked to leave. Luke Bryan and his establishment have not yet publicly addressed the news of Strain's death. Our hearts go out to Riley Strain's family and friends during this difficult time. Paula Abdul honored with the True Ally Award. I love you all so very, very, very much. Hollywood glittered brighter than ever during the 2024 Queerties Awards, a star-studded affair dedicated to honoring the LGBTQ plus community and its allies. Among the unforgettable moments of the evening was the Straight Up Ally Award bestowed upon Paula Abdul, a true champion of LGBTQ plus rights. David Archuleta, the beloved American Idol alum and celebrated queer artist, took to the stage to pay tribute to Abdul. Paula has always used her platform to be a vocal advocate for the queer community. The night was a spectacle of unity and celebration with Jinx Monsoon, the fabulous host, ensuring laughter filled the air. Attendees, including Rosie O'Donnell, cheered on the LGBTQ plus community, reinforcing the message of acceptance and progress. Archuleta's heartfelt tribute to Abdul was a highlight of the evening. His performance, a medley of Abdul's iconic hits, resonated deeply, showcasing the enduring power of music to bridge hearts and minds. Paula Abdul's impact on pop culture and the LGBTQ community is immeasurable. From her infectious songs to her empathetic mentorship on American Idol, she has left an indelible mark. Vanderpump Rules' Tom Sandoval compares himself to murderer Scott Peterson. I'm being treated like I'm Scott Peterson. In a heart-wrenching turn of events, Vanderpump Rules star Tom Sandoval opened up about the emotional toll of his recent cheating scandal and breakup with Rachel Raquel Levis. During a vulnerable moment on the show's latest episode, Sandoval compared his public ostracization to that of convicted murderer Scott Peterson. I'm being treated like I'm Scott Peterson. His comparisons shocked those around him as he likened his public perception to that of a convicted murderer. Totally Bizarre High School Fundraiser. 
Picture this, in the quirky realm of Deer Creek High School, a fundraising event took a peculiar turn, leaving peanut butter and toes in the spotlight. What is this? Yep, you heard that right. Last week, a video surfaced showing students gleefully licking peanut butter off each other's toes as part of a fundraiser. <laughs> Now I know what you're thinking, terrific or terrible? Well, opinions were divided as, well, a foot with five toes. Dubbed the wonderful week of fundraising, this event is a yearly tradition where Deer Creek High School students go all out, all out, to raise money for a chosen cause. And this year, they went all the way down to the toes. Whew. The charity of choice? Not Your Average Joe Coffee, a non-profit brewing up opportunities for folks with disabilities. But wait, the plot thickens. Turns out the coffee shop had nothing to do with this totalitarian peanut butter party. Lord. Now imagine poor Tim Herbal, the executive director of Not Your Average Joe, waking up to find his coffee shops swamped with calls from folks expressing their utter disbelief and outrage. Of course they did. And guess who's manning the phones? Yep, you guessed it. People with special needs getting an earful about peanut butter pedicures. <laughs> oh God. And let's not forget our internet heroes jumping into the fray. Ryan Walters, the state superintendent, vows to clean up this filth faster than you can say footloose. Even Ted Cruz, boo, chimed in, labeling it child abuse. Can you imagine the debates in Congress now? The great toe-licking scandal of 2024. Good Lord. So there you have it, folks. A tale as wacky as it is wobbly, leaving us all wondering, where do we draw the line between fundraising and feet-first chaos? Until next time, keep your toes out of the peanut butter and your fundraisers totally sane. If you've got a toe in your mouth, you've gone too far. Good Lord. An electoral conspiracy theorist has found hard evidence of election fraud. Kimberly Zapata, a former Milwaukee election official, was called for President Biden to be decertified because he came by the presidency unlawfully, found that three separate military personnel had their votes cast without their knowledge. A judge and jury has ruled that the perpetrator of this heinous crime is in fact guilty as charged, vindicating Kimberly's long-held beliefs. The name of this lawbreaker is Kimberly Zapata, who was found guilty of one felony count of misconduct in public office and three misdemeanor counts of election fraud. What? That's right. It turns out that the election interference she was searching for was within her all along. When found out, she claimed she was doing it to expose flaws in the system, but the judge and jury clearly didn't believe her. So in this instance, at least it seems as she who smelt it, dealt it. Sad news from fitness guru Richard Simmons. The beloved personality took to Facebook to reveal his battle with skin cancer, but he did it in a really unclear way that got people worrying. On Monday, March 18th, he wrote on X, I have some news to tell you. Please don't be sad. I am dying. Oh, I can see your faces now. The truth is, we all are dying. Every day we live, we are getting closer to our death. Why am I telling you this? Because I want you to enjoy your life to the fullest every single day. Get up in the morning and look at the sky. Count your blessings and enjoy. Obviously, Everyone started to freak out. So then he took back to X to say, sorry many of you have gotten upset about my message today. Even the press has gotten in touch with me. I am not dying. It was a message about saying how we should embrace every day that we have. Sorry for this confusion. To be fair, people only thought he was dying because he specifically said he was dying. Simmons shared his cancer journey in a heartfelt post, recounting his visit to the dermatologist and subsequent diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma, a very common and treatable cancer that can, if left untreated, continue to grow deeper under the skin and cause significant destruction to surrounding tissue, even becoming fatal. With courage, Simmons underwent burning procedures, uh, but received the sad news that the cancer couldn't be entirely removed in one go. So to conclude, 
Richard Simmons is not dying. He just wants you to appreciate your life, and he doesn't stop for even half a second to consider whether his words could be misconstrued on social media.